Every three to four minutes, there was loud gunshot-like noises. It's a heck of a sound to hear when you're that far under the ocean in a craft that has only been down that deep once before. Back in 2019, Carl was one of the first to set foot inside the doomed Titan on a test dive in the Bahamas. You've been building deep sea submersibles since you were a teenager. You've got thousands of hours experience in piloting these craft. In your expert opinion, what was the fatal flaw of the Titan? Um, there's no doubt in my mind that it was the carbon fiber tube that was the mechanical part that failed. And that's what you believe you heard essentially cracking? Correct. Titan was the only commercial submersible in the world with a hull made from carbon fibre composite. That's because the rest of the industry considers the lightweight material not up to the job, incapable of withstanding extreme deep sea pressure. But for Stockton Rush, the extra space meant he could fit more passengers on board. <laughs> so we got the aft dome here. This is another three and a quarter inch thick titanium dome uh, bolted to uh, another titanium piece glued to the carbon fiber. Carbon fiber is coated with rhino liner, which is sort of what the military is. It stops uh, water penetration at high pressure into the, uh, into the carbon fiber. Comparing Titan to a professionally built class vehicle is like comparing a home-built microlite with a Boeing airliner. I mean, yes, they both fly, but the differences in engineering standards are profound. Rob McCallum worked with OceanGate as a consultant early on, but was alarmed by the company's experimental approach. A carbon fiber sub that's essentially a home build with no independent oversight is not up for the task, as, as we can now see. Can you explain that a little for those of us who aren't familiar with carbon composites? Why is it not appropriate for that environment? What happens over time and over dives? I mean, carbon fibre uh, is actually essentially a long piece of string, you know, a long piece of fibre. And it's wound around and around uh, a shape, in this case a cylinder, and in a medium of, of resin or glue, and once it sets, you've got all of these uh, fibres that are held in place by the resin. Check the surface out. But unlike metal, which is predictable, you know, you can give an engineer any kind of metal and give them the gauge, you know, the thickness and the application it's going to be used in, and they'll be able to calculate for you exactly how it's going to act. Carbon fibre, you can't do that because it is, it's a material that's a composite. The fibre can vary, the, the resin can vary, the, the, the way it's built on the day can vary. So it's much harder to predict. The second thing is that each of those fibres is made up of actually many, many microfibres. And if they start to crack or separate or are damaged in any way, then that can lead to sort of a cascading event over a series of dives where the hull gets weaker and weaker. The opposite is true with metal. So the Titan could have several successful dives, which it did, but then fail. Yes, and you're not able to predict that failure point. So if we were to build a submersible out of titanium or steel, we would know at what point it would uh, fail, and then we can dial it back to its, uh, to its safe working depth.